Conservative MP Dan Lloyd calls out the Liberals and the NDP for playing games with Canada's sovereignty. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Conservative MP Dane Lloyd calls the Liberals to task for leaking information to the American media while leaving Canada completely and totally on blackout. I mean, it's a, it's astounding that they would think, we're going to control our media, but we're going to let the Americans know anything they want to know. It's ridiculous. And the NDP, of course, helped them right along. There is no evidence to, in anything that I've seen that they're, they've stopped being the confidence and the supply for these far left leaning politicians who seem to think that it's okay to give foreign countries rights and trample those of Canadians. So I'm going to let you listen to what he has to say because I found that it was to be very concise and very insightful. Disturbing that information was shared with a uh, foreign media outlet, the Washington Post, uh, before Canadians were made aware of the situation uh, involving the allegations that a foreign government, in this case India, uh, has been uh, sponsoring acts of crime in our country, um, which is a concern of all Canadians when our sovereignty is is impacted in this case. And and I think, you know, if the allegations made by the Globe and Mail are true, I think it illustrates a greater point, which speaks to the sub amendment that my colleague Mr. McGregor put forward, where he talks about uh, the release of the names. Uh, must only be done in accordance with national security. And I'll say that uh, at all times, in, in my original sub-amendment, it's implied that uh, we will not violate the, the safety of agents who are in the field in the release of any information. However, with the addition of this sub-sub-amendment, I have concerns because it's clear to me that we have a government that feels that it can leak information if it's in their own political benefit. Information gets shared with groups like the Washington Post, information uh, being leaked like the Prime Minister uh, outrageously at the Hope Commission, uh, selectively uh, saying that he has information related to Conservative parliamentarians, uh, which I think people in the media and across the country have rightly uh, denounced and criticized as a blatant partisan act by the Prime Minister. Uh, we know from security officials that that foreign interference is, is, is a broad issue across this country, and for the Prime Minister to try to weaponize information that he's privy to in a way that is vague uh, really puts uh, a cloud of suspicion over all members of Parliament. And frankly, I think it, it devolves uh, this foreign interference debate into a into a partisan debate when it really doesn't need to be. And I think the fact is, and, and so we will call this out, we will hold this government accountable uh, when they put their own partisan interests above the national security of our country. And we know that uh, this is a prime minister who's, who's facing an internal revolt. He's facing uh, numerous pressures uh, and he's attempting to distract in any way he can uh, by outrageously uh, using selective information that is curated to solely benefit himself politically and not to benefit the national security of our country. And I will note that, you know, this all could have been avoided. Our, our House leader, Andrew Scheer, the Honourable Andrew Scheer, uh, in the wake of findings from the ENSICOP report that uh, there were members of Parliament who were compromised uh, by uh, foreign interference, that uh, Conservatives put forward a way forward that would respect our national security and a, and a letter that was put forward to Parliament. It was requested that the Hogue Commission uh, be given a broader set of powers and be given a broader mandate in order to, uh, and receive the unredacted information needed in order to reveal um, when, when possible the names of, of members of Parliament or other parliamentarians, both current and former, who have been implicated in foreign interference. And I think it's, it's only fair that, uh, that those members of parliament that are involved be, be notified about this because they're under a cloud of suspicion and they need to have the ability to clear their names um, if they are innocent. 
and and Canadians need to be given a chance to, you know, we're facing, uh, there will be an election uh, by October of 2025, guaranteed. And uh, Canadians need to know that uh, the air needs to be cleared, that our parliament is, is free from uh, ser these serious allegations of foreign interference. And, uh, you know, if, I'm sure if this Liberal government had their way, you know, Canadians wouldn't even know that foreign interference was happening in this country. We saw the the links that this government went to uh, to hide uh, this very uh, you know this very serious information. The links that they went to to uh, to even outright deny that foreign interference was happening in the case of uh, uh, Minister Blair when he came to this committee in his role as uh, Minister for Emergency Preparedness answering for his tenure as Minister of Public Safety uh, when he said that there, they had no, they had received no evidence that there was foreign interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. This is the Minister of Public Safety saying this in 2022, and we now know uh, from the, the Hogue Commission and, and from information that's been shared in the, in the public space that there was indeed foreign interference that affected uh, at least eight ridings I mean, it's pretty unequivocal. They let eight ridings be influenced. Eight, probably in some of our biggest cities. It's not like, you know, the these foreign countries are going to be trying to influence a small little riding way up north. They want the people that are going to be around where the money is, right, where the influence is. And as Canada has so many people crammed into their large cities, it stands to reason. I don't imagine they would waste the resources on some, like, not a big riding, as opposed to how many people might be living in, you know, a riding that's in downtown Toronto or downtown Vancouver or something like that. But the Liberal Party doesn't seem to be wanting to care. And Jagmeet Singh doesn't seem to care either. He just wants to help the Liberal Party cover it up. He just wants to help the Liberal Party hide it. I think that that's really, uh, you know, the, in a nutshell, the kind of politicians that we've been dealing with for the last nine years. I mean... They don't seem to care what we're going through, and they don't seem to care who they work for. It's kind of uh, blatant. And, of course, Jagmeet Singh is just keeping the Liberal Party floating because he wants his pension because he doesn't care about the commoner. He doesn't care about the working man. He doesn't care about any of that. He cares about himself, and that's it, and that's all. He's not trying to do his job in the sense where he's trying to be a public servant. He's trying to do his job in a sense where he's going to get a giant payout. And then he'll leave politics and go, I don't know what, invest his money in a business or start, you know, go back to practicing law. Meanwhile, we get to put up with foreign interference because the Liberal Party is still in power, still in, in, in the government, still forms the government. It's really kind of uh, annoying, to put it lightly. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.